In this video, we're going to continue on the types of frames. So in the previous video, we talked about joint mode and world mode. World mode is part of one of the types of frames. We're going to be focusing on tool frame in this video. So just to recap, joint mode is basically the manipulation and rotation of each of the joints. So joint mode has to do with degrees of motion. So if you're going five degrees, 10 degrees, 90 degrees, so it's not based on an actual millimeters or inches, it's based on degree. Then world frame is based on a origin, which every robot has an origin at a specific place. You will have to look that up based on the robot you have. And where the face plate is in relation to that 000, zero is the world mode. Now what's nice about world mode is you can jog straight left and right, up and down, forward and backwards, and you can also rotate around that plate as well. And the robot will automatically do the calculations and move each of the joints so that you continue moving on that position. The next type of frame is going to be the tool frame. Tool frames are an origin in which you create and you have to specify how far away from that face plate each of the tool frames are. So right now this is world mode. So from that face plate center to zero zero and then we specify how far from that face plate down or left up on an angle it is so that the robot can calculate that end so where this is very useful is you have a manipulator like a grabber so this is the tool frame right here so that when we move the actual robot arm it will move based on the center point so you just center it on to whatever you're gripping and then that gripper will grab on both sides equally or if you have a welding tip you'll have the tool frame right at the where the wire comes out and where you want to strike that actual arc so here we have a spot welder the spot welder tool frame will be right at that center mark so you can specifically put that spot welder in to where it needs to be uh, for a spray arm will be however the distance needs to be from the spray to the actual device to make sure that you're not running the paint a couple ways that we've actually set up tool frames uh, number one is going to be a three-point method which is used most often there's the six-point method which is a little bit more accurate um, and then you have direct entry method which is if you have your end of tool frame in actual computer space you can specify all the dimensions needed to get to that center point wherever you need it to be so if you know all the dimensions you can directly enter those dimensions from that center of the faceplate okay so if you do not have a CAD drawing of your actual manipulator then three point is probably going to be the method that you're going to do again there's multiple videos on how to do a three point method um, we're going to run through it in computer space even though it's not necessary because all the tool frames are actually set up when you add tools to your objects unless you create your own tool so to set up a tool frame you go onto your teach pendant and you go under menu number six is going to be setup then to frames and make sure you're under tool frame and then you pick which tool frame you want to go with so right now tool frame number one here is going to be our gripper um, and then we have other end of arm toolings number three and then so on so on so on then you go in there you can change your name of that and then you're going to go in to method and then pick which type entry you want whether it's three point or direct entry again there is six point and two point plus z uh, which is a little bit different so when you do a three point come three different directions with the robot end of arm tooling and you're going to save that point as you come in there and then the robot will automatically do the calculations to know where that end of arm tooling is in three dimensional space so here's the correct way and then the incorrect way so you want to come in all three directions x y and z it doesn't have to be perfectly 90 degrees but the closer you get to that uh, the better you are so you're going to come in you're going to approach turn the robot approach again and then turn your robot again all right so we have our end of arm tooling uh, which is a pointer here which is pretty simple because it's going to be directly down we're going to just have a z offset here um, of a certain amount um, and then we have our bolted down point uh, you can create these actually in three-dimensional space so example i made this in autodesk inventor and then i saved it as an object file and then i imported it into cell right here 
we're going to use this to simulate how to put in a tool frame. Again, we do we have to do this in our computer space? Because we saved this tool, it's actually already in here. So if I go to my tool frames, so hit the plus next to the robot, here's the tooling, there's my pointer, and if I double click it, here's actually all the offsets that is already put in. So we're at 0, 0, 180. So when we're done with this, we should actually match this direct entry here. Okay, so let's um let's create our own tool frame. So let's open up the tool teach pendant. Let's go to menu, go to setup, and then we're going to go to frames. So if you go to other, there's tool, jog, user. So we'll work with these a little later, mainly the user frame. Um, so but right now we're in tool frame. So if you're not in tool frame, make sure you do that. Right now we have our active tool frame as number one, uh, which is our pointer. Again, direct entry is zero. So actually let's go down. So let's go arrow down and you can use the arrow down or because this is a computer program, we can arrow down on our keypad. Then we're going to go to detail. So we're going to go end of arm tooling here. We're going to go method. We're going to go three point. And when we're in the three point, this pop up. Now we can actually change the comment here. And on an actual teach pendant, you would go down to options, keyboard, keyboard, and then you would type in what your item be. Now you will see actually lettering just like you would see on a keyboard on a computer. So I might just call this uh, test underscore tool. Exit will accept enter. Then we're going to go down to approach number one and we're going to jog this robot down so that our tip here matches the tip of the pointer there. So we can use the robot just like we would do in real life so we would hold shift and then we would z down now in this case we do have our computer software so let's turn on our world mode so let's go coordinate right now it's on world so we're good so we're going to click the little ball at the end we're going to bring the robot down and we're going to get it really close to our part so you're going to have to rotate a couple different directions to get it close so what i like to do is i like to go between the different views and zoom in here and the closer you zoom in the better off you are front view now and you're going to have to do it work in a couple different views you can also move and this is where you can slow down the speed a little bit better um, so you can get that fine-tuned movement there we go so there my tip is pretty close now I'm going to go Z a little bit and I'm going to go down to uh, fine, and every time I press this, it's going to go a couple thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to get pretty close here, as close as you can, tip to tip. And going to go down even closer to very fine. There we go, and I'm going to go up a little bit in Z, zoom in even closer. And this is what's nice about the computer software, um, if you can zoom in all the way to make sure that you're actually picking the correct area. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to zoom in here. i got to move a little bit in the X direction here. A bit more. That might be as close as we're going to get it. Okay. So now that I have this point here, and so once I have this, this is going to be my first part. So now I'm going to go F5, which is record. And now I have to come in in a different angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this. Be just a hair bit. There we go. And we zoom in. Make sure the tip is actually pointed at there. So I'm going to move this up just a hair bit. There we go. And I need to move it forward just a hair bit. And I'm going to go down to very fine. And when you're down to very fine, you have to press it. So every press is one ten thousandths of an inch. Top view. And that looks good. So when we go down to approach number two, and I'm going to record. Then we go to approach number three, and I'm going to completely rotate it around to a different side. We'll go and move to the Y side here. I'm going to bring it off to the side here. I'm going to rotate my joint. Now, if you want to switch between coordinate and joint mode, we can rotate our head here, rotate around here. Okay. 
go down to very fine again. And we switch to world mode again, Z axis, so I can get close. There we go. All right, so now we're going to record. Let's go previous, which will bring us back. And you can see we're pretty close. We're not exact, so we're a little bit off. So the direct entry needs to be 180, so we're about 1.6 millimeters off, which is not much considering what we did with the software, but it could be enough to throw you off when you're in production. So if you have a direct method entry, um, that is the best case scenario to put it in. So direct method is actually fairly simple. So I'm going to actually go back here to uh, the home position two. There we go. And here's the direct entry. So if we have a CAD file for this and we know that this is 180 uh, millimeters down to the tip here, we can easily add that. So let's go down to tool frame three and let's go to detail and let's go method direct entry and here we can change this so we double click that options keyboard keyboard and we could type in our tool so we'll go direct exit so direct and we don't go anything in the x we don't go any in the z a y and here's the z so we're going to go 180 hit enter and then we're going to go back so previous screen, now we have our direct entry of 180. So our tool frame is now set up. So you can see how fast that was compared to doing the three point test or even the six point. The six point would take even more time over the three point. So if that is your only option, then obviously that's what you're going to have to do. But the best way of putting in a tool frame is now putting into direct and what's nice about this is we can now manipulate and move based on that tool end so we can switch this instead of world mode we can go to tool mode and now wherever that point is of that tip we can manipulate based on that tip point so I can rotate based on that tip I can rotate around that tip point so if this is the end of the welder, you can get that end of the welder to be exactly where you need it to be. And that is tool frames. In the next video, we will look at user frames.